my dear students welcome back to our channel students in this video i am explaining telangana intermediate first year subject zoology part c long questions 8 marks let's start quick revision first important question is one describe different types of food chains that exist in an ecosystem in an ecosystem A food chain shows how energy and nutrients flow from one living thing to another. It starts with producers like plants and moves up to consumers animals that eat them. There are different types of food chains based on the roles of the organisms involved. One grazing food chain. In this food chain, energy starts with plants which are eaten by herbivores. plant eating animals and then those herbivores are eaten by carnivores meat eating animals example grass producer rabbit herbivore fox carnivore in this chain grass makes its own food using sunlight a rabbit eats the grass and a fox eats the rabbit two detritus food chain this type of food chain starts with dead plants or animals called detritus decomposers break down this dead matter and then other organisms eat these decomposers example dead leaves detritus earthworm decomposer bird consumer in this chain dead leaves fall to the ground where earthworms break them down birds eat the worms and get energy from them three parasitic food chain here one organism lives off another without killing it right away the parasite benefits while the host suffers example cattle host tick parasite bird consumes tick the tick feeds on the blood of the cattle and a bird may later eat the tick conclusion food chains show how living things depend on each other for energy they can start with plants or dead matter and organisms can play different roles such as producers consumers or decomposers each chain is part of a larger web that keeps an ecosystem balanced next important question is to describe the life cycle of plasmodium vivax in mosquito the life cycle of plasmodium vivax The parasite that causes malaria involves two hosts, a mosquito and a human. The cycle in the mosquito has several important stages. 1. Infection of mosquito. When a mosquito bites an infected human to feed on their blood, it picks up plasmodium parasites called sporozoites from the human's bloodstream. These sporozoites travel through the mosquito's body to the salivary glands. two sporozoite stage once the mosquito is ready to bite another person the sporozoites are injected into the person's blood stream this happens when the mosquito feeds three development in mosquito inside the mosquito plasmodium undergoes several changes the sporozoites travel to the mosquito's salivary glands where they are ready to be passed into a human While in the mosquito, plasmodium grows and develops into different stages. After biting a human, it releases sporozoites which infect the human's liver. 4. Transmission to human. Once inside the human, the sporozoites reach the liver where they multiply and develop. Some sporozoites leave the liver and enter the blood stream again. where they infect red blood cells and continue to multiply causing symptoms of malaria like fever and chills 5 human to mosquito when another mosquito bites an infected human it picks up the plasmodium parasites from the human's blood these parasites continue to develop in the mosquito starting the cycle over summary in short Plasmodium vivax is passed between humans and mosquitoes. The mosquito is essential for spreading the parasite 
while humans are where it causes illness. The parasite multiplies in the mosquito and in the human's liver and blood, which is why controlling mosquitoes is key to preventing malaria. Next important question is, 3. Describe the blood circulatory system of Periplaneta in detail and draw a neat diagram of it. The blood circulatory system of Periplaneta, commonly known as the cockroach, is an open circulatory system. This means that instead of blood being confined to vessels like in humans, it flows freely through the body cavity. Components of the blood circulatory system 1. Heart The heart is a tube-like structure located in the back, dorsal side of the cockroach. It is divided into several chambers and is responsible for pumping blood. The heart moves blood from the rear to the front of the body. 2. Blood The blood in periplaneta is called hemolymph. It does not carry oxygen as in humans. Instead, it transports nutrients, waste products and hormones. Hemolymph is colorless and is pumped by the heart. 3. Hemocoel The hemolymph circulates through the body cavity known as the hemocoel. The hemocoel is the main space where organs float and the hemolymph bathes all the internal organs, providing nutrients and removing waste. 4. Sinuses these are spaces where the blood flows freely around the organs. The cockroach's internal organs do not have blood vessels like veins and arteries. Instead, they are surrounded by sinuses where the blood flows to nourish them. 5. Ostea The heart has small openings called ostea, which allow blood to enter the heart. The ostea are valve-like structures, that ensure the blood moves in only one direction. Blood flow The heart pumps hemolymph from the rear of the body to the front. After reaching the front, the blood flows into the hemocoel, where it circulates around the organs. The blood then flows back to the heart through the ostea, and the cycle repeats. Diagram of the circulatory system 1. A tube-like heart at the back of the body two small chambers and ostea in the heart, three blood flowing through sinuses and surrounding organs. This system is different from humans because periplaneta has an open circulatory system without blood vessels to carry oxygen. Next important question is, four, list out the major air pollutants and describe their effects on human beings. Air pollution is caused by harmful substances released into the air. These pollutants can have serious effects on human health. Here are the major air pollutants and how they affect humans. 1. Carbon monoxide, coal. Source, it comes from car exhausts, industrial processes and burning fuels. Effect on humans, carbon monoxide is harmful because it can reduce the amount of oxygen in the blood. Breathing in high levels of co can cause headaches, dizziness, confusion and in severe cases, even death. 2. Sulfur dioxide, so. Source, this gas is mainly produced by burning coal and oil in power plants, factories and vehicles. Effect on humans, it can irritate the lungs and cause breathing problems. People with asthma or other lung diseases are particularly affected. Long-term exposure can lead to serious lung damage. 3. Nitrogen Oxides, no. Source, these are released from vehicle exhausts and industrial activities. Effect on humans, nitrogen oxides can irritate the eyes, nose and throat. They also cause lung problems like asthma and bronchitis. Prolonged exposure can reduce lung function and cause heart disease. 4. Particulate matter, PM Source, particles like dust, dirt and soot from vehicles, factories and construction work. Effect on humans, small particles can enter the lungs and bloodstream causing respiratory problems like asthma and bronchitis. 
Long term exposure increases the risk of heart disease and lung cancer. 5. Ozone O. Source Ozone forms when sunlight reacts with pollutants like nitrogen oxides and volatile organic compounds, VOCs, from cars and industrial emissions. Effect on humans, ozone irritates the lungs and can cause coughing, chest pain, and shortness of breath. It worsens asthma and can reduce lung function, especially in children and the elderly. 6. Volatile Organic Compounds, VOCs Source, VOCs come from paint, solvents, car exhaust, and industrial emissions. Effect on humans, VOCs can cause headaches, dizziness, and nausea. Long-term exposure can lead to liver and kidney damage and even cancer. Conclusion Air pollutants can have serious health impacts, especially on the lungs, heart, and overall well-being. Reducing pollution is crucial for protecting human health. Next important question is, 5. Explain the structure and life cycle of Entomoeba histolytica with the help of neat and labeled diagrams. Entomoeba histolytica is a microscopic parasite that causes amoebic dysentery and infection of the intestines. The life cycle of Entomoeba histolytica involves two main stages, the cyst and the trophozoite. Here's an easy-to-understand explanation of its structure and life cycle. Structure of Entomoeba histolytica 1. Trophozoite This is the active, feeding form of the parasite. It is a single-celled organism with a large, central nucleus and cytoplasm. It has a structure called pseudopodia, false feet, that helps it move and feed. Nucleus The nucleus contains the genetic material, DNA. Cytoplasm the jelly-like substance inside the cell, where the cell's activities take place. Pseudopodia, these extensions of the cell help the parasite move and capture food. 2. Cyst, this is the dormant, infectious form of Entomoeba histolytica. It has a tough outer shell, cyst wall, that protects it when it is outside the human body and in harsh conditions. The cyst can survive in water, soil, or food until it is ingested by a human. Life Cycle of Entomoeba Histolytica 1. Ingestion of Cyst The life cycle begins when a human ingests the cysts of Entomoeba Histolytica through contaminated water or food. 2. Existation Once in the small intestine, the cyst breaks open, releasing the trophozoites. These trophozoites can then move to the large intestine, where they live and multiply. 3. Trophozoid Stage The trophozoites feed on the intestinal lining and may cause ulcers. They can invade the tissues of the intestine and cause disease. 4. Encystation Some trophozoites form cysts in the large intestine before leaving the body through the feces. These cysts are then able to infect others if ingested. 5. Transmission The cycle continues when another person ingests the cysts, typically through contaminated food or water. Diagram Cyst ingested by human existation trophozoites in the intestine some form cysts again excreted in feces cycle repeats. Conclusion Entomoeba histolytica causes disease by producing cysts that survive outside the body and infect others through contaminated food and water. Its life cycle involves both active and dormant stages. Next important question is 6. Describe the digestive system of cockroach with the help of a neat labeled diagram. The digestive system of a cockroach is quite similar to that of other insects and it is responsible for breaking down food and absorbing nutrients. The system is divided into several parts, each having a specific function. Let's take a closer look at the structure and working of the digestive system. Parts of the digestive system 1. Mouth 
The cockroach's mouth is equipped with chewing parts called mandibles, which help in biting and grinding food. The mouth leads to the pharynx, where food is swallowed. To esophagus, the food moves from the mouth to the esophagus, a tube-like structure that leads the food to the next stage of digestion. 3. Crop the crop is a temporary storage area where food is stored after being swallowed. It also softens the food before it moves to the next stage. 4. Gizzard After the crop, food passes into the gizzard. This part is muscular and grinds the food, often with the help of small stones the cockroach ingests. This grinding helps break down food into smaller pieces for digestion. 5. Midret The midret is the main site of digestion and absorption. Enzymes break down food here and nutrients are absorbed into the cockroach's bloodstream. 6. Hindgut The hindgut is involved in water reabsorption and the removal of waste products. It is divided into three parts. Ileum absorbs nutrients that weren't absorbed in the midret. Colon helps in water absorption. Rectum, where undigested food is compacted into feces, which is then excreted. Diagram Mouth esophagus crop gizzard midgut hindgut ileum colon rectum. Functioning The cockroach eats food, stores it in the crop, grinds it in the gizzard, digests it in the midgut, and absorbs nutrients. Finally, the waste moves through the hindgut, where water is absorbed and the rest is excreted. Conclusion The cockroach's digestive system is designed to efficiently process food, absorb nutrients and expel waste. It uses specialized parts like the crop, gizzard and midget to break down food. I hope you understand easily each question. All the best students for your upcoming exam. For other subject quick revision. Important questions. Previous question papers. And syllabus. Links are available in description. Check out once. Thank you for watching. Like and share this video with your friends.